Ever wonder if you could turn this into a lead generation machine? And if by some chance you don't know what you're looking at here, this is Google Maps. And obviously, you can find a lot of different businesses on Google Maps. But the trick is, well, how do you pull that data in to be able to turn it into something where you could use it for your business? Um, there's a ton of data here that you can actually scrape using the Google Maps API. And that's what I want to show you guys today, uh, where I've built an NADN workflow that will pull in the Google Maps data with some pre-configuration within the workflow. And uh, that will upload that into a Google Sheet to use for <clears throat> your marketing thereafter. All right, to get started, you'll need two tools to make this automation work. One, you'll need N8N, which is a um, secure AI native workflow automation platform. Um, that's sort of where I do a lot of my automation work. And you can either do the cloud version or you can self-host NADM because they do offer that option. And they're the only platform that does that out of, you know, Zapier, Make.com. Uh, I, I self-host all my NADM instances. Just gives me a lot more flexibility, <clears throat> flexibility as well. By the version, cloud or self-host uh, will get you started. All right. The next tool you'll need is to set up a Google Cloud account. This is a free account. You don't have to pay for the Google Maps API access. There's a certain limit, but I think uh, what we're going to be doing, you're not going to hit those limits anytime soon. So create, or, I'm sorry, create a Google Cloud account and enable the Google Maps API. There is a... Um, there's documentation on the N8N website that will help you walk through how to get a Google Maps API set up with all the proper OAuth uh, authentication that you'll need going from Google to N8N and vice versa, all right? So that's tool number two. You'll need to get that set up in order for us to get started. Okay, you've got your tool set up. You've got your N8N set up. You've got your Google Cloud account set up with the Google Maps API ready to go. And now you're looking at the actual workflow that we're going to be reviewing today. Um, as you can see here on the left side, we're going to start with our triggers. And right now we're just doing a manual trigger that we're going to run this workflow with. You can set it on a schedule or you can trigger it with a, another workflow. Uh, so if you have a group of workflows that you're using this uh, Google Maps API scraper with, then you can trigger it that way. But in this instance, we're just going to trigger it with a manual workflow. And then um, set the categories we'd like to search for. And then we're going to set the URL of our Google Sheets document. And then we're going to set the zip code sheet name. And what does that mean, right? So um, I'll show you real quick. So I took a little bit of a different approach where instead of inputting the category inside this workflow, we're going to actually configure that in the Google Sheets document. So what we're doing here, you can see here in my Google Sheets document, these are the categories and subcategories within Google Maps, right? So as you can see here, we have quite a lot of different categories. If you wanted to add more, you could do so and then use that as a search criteria for the Google Maps API. But in our example, I just am going to search for plumbers, right? So if you set the status to ignore, that means the workflow will not search for any of these categories. So you can see here that, you know, if we set the more categories we set, the more leads we're going to find. And it's very easy to get to 10,000 and above very quickly. Trust me, I've done it. All right, so here are the categories. So you're gonna you know, 
decide which ones you're going to search for. And then in our example, the way I've set this up, I've set it up to go and use zip codes within a certain state. And right now we're just doing Arizona, but what this uh, workflow will do is it will take the zip code and then it'll take the category and find all those businesses, remove the duplicates, and then add those back into the results set here. Okay. So, uh, oops. So here we, you know, we're getting everything set up as I mentioned before. And then we're going to do some data prepping. What does that mean? Well, we're going to pull the zip codes from that Google Sheets document. We're going to filter out the zip codes. So I'm doing some uh, data prepping here. I think I'm doing some limitations again so that this doesn't run like crazy. So you can set limits here if you want. All right. And then we're going to start with the loop to start uh, looping through the zip codes. And then it's going to pull in the categories that we're going to be looking for in each zip code. And then it will go through and loop through the category where this is where it's going to actually hit the Google Maps API. So it'll get the category, set the zip code, and then search. And if um, if it's if the data returned is empty, then it'll go back to the next zip code and start again. We've got some code here that will um, sort of parse the data that's returned back from the Google Maps API so that we can clean that up and move that to the Google Sheet. And you can see here we're removing any duplicates. We're adding the row of data, uh, setting the status of the, the zip code. And you can see, I think you saw this earlier, where We've pulled the zip, pulled the category. We've scraped the zip code, and you can see here that it's scraped. And then it's also setting the subcategories that were scraped for that zip code. And ultimately, here we have a list of results. Um, so far, we have 24, 23 items from that one zip code, and you can see we have eighteen hundred and four zip codes to run through and that's just within one state and so you can see that very quickly once you start running this workflow you're going to get a lot of different leads you do have to do, um, clean you know clean up some of those leads as well as do some data enrichment and i'll do another video on, to show you how to do that um, a little bit later but you know that's in a nutshell, that's what this workflow is doing. It's, you know, using uh, a predefined set of categories and zip codes to pull in Google Maps data and prepare a list of leads for you. So there you have it. Fairly straightforward. I know this might look a little bit more complicated, um, but trust me, this is working very nicely. And um, if you watch my other video about exponential back off, the Google's, especially the Google Sheets API, you'll hit those limits fairly quickly, especially with the type of volume that we're looking at, right? In my example, I'm just running one zip code in one category, but, um, you know, this Arizona zip code list is, it's 1,804 zip codes just within Arizona. So if we were to hit all 50 states, um, you can see how that data is going to get large very quickly and so we do have some um, error handling with the back off in this workflow that's kind of built in but in in a nutshell what we're doing is using that google sheets document to set the category set the zip codes and then boom get all that data from within google maps now there is a lot of data enrichment that you'd want to after you have these leads so you can see here in my google sheets document there's no email there's no name um you know we do have a url which is sort of what we would use to enrich this data for example you know social media links um something i was doing is checking to see whether they were using wordpress or not for their website um I think that was sort of the, the main things I was trying to do in terms of data enrichment. So I do have a few other workflows that 
are used for data enrichment and I'll post that up in a different video. But for today, this workflow that we're looking at here will allow you to generate 10,000 leads, if not more, all right, on a monthly basis, maybe even on a weekly basis if you wanted to go crazy with the, the workflow execution. But this potential to pull in leads for your business and additionally enrich that data to be able to have um, a very, very robust leads list for your business is here and ready to go. All right, let me know if you have any questions or comments, add those into the comments sections. And if you watched this far, thanks for watching. All right, see you guys next time.